This morning I saw a spectacular sunrise and uh, it inspired me to try my hands at uh, painting a kind of a sunrise sky. So let's uh, take a look at the materials I'm going to use. I um, I chose a titanium white as well as an uh, ivory black kinacridone crimson, but you can use any uh, kind of uh, pinkish or uh, a red pink color that you prefer. I'm also going to be using uh, this blue color. It's called uh, wedge wood, but uh, don't worry if you don't have the exact same color. Just uh, pick a kind of bluish gray color if you want something uh, similar. Lastly, I think I'd like to try this uh, uh, ink here. It's called uh, antelope brown. It uh, it's quite a uh, kind of very dark olivey uh, color, but when it gets diluted, it kind of goes into these yellow tones. But again, don't worry if you don't have these exact same colors. Just pick three colors plus black and white and stick to those. That way you'll have perfect color harmony. Okay, let me get the colors out and we'll start painting. We are going to be working in different stages during this painting exercise. So um, there's going to be some drying time in between the different layers that we're going to make. First off, I got this uh, water spray bottle and I'm just going to mist the paper. Um, it's going to be a bit random, so I can't exactly control it, but that's part of this uh, expressive style that we're looking at. Okay, I'm just testing to see the flow here and the spray, and then I'm just going to give it a few spray. Furthermore, I got a bucket over here with water, so let me just make a few wet brush strokes here with a clean brush. This is the acrylic ink uh, I'm going to uh, be using. Um, again, don't worry if you don't have ink. You can uh, simply uh, dilute your uh, regular acrylic paints and, and use that. Look at the color over here when I'm diluting it. It kind of turns this uh, mustardy yellow color. So it's quite nice. But it can also be very dark as we can see up here. I'm um, going to try and use this uh, dropper that comes with this ink bottle. So I fill up this uh, dropper with some ink and then I'm just going to try some expressive marks here. And you can clearly see how the ink flows uh, into the areas that are, that I, uh, were made wet with the spray and the and the brush, the wet brush. So it's not easy con to control this. Again, that's not the point. I'm not using a lot of ink here. I'm gonna use a little bit up here in the sky. Let's see how that looks. I think I'd like it to spread out a bit more. Let me just add some water. Also keep some uh, kitchen towel handy to kind of control the, the water, amount of water on your brush. So the objective here is to um, get the color flowing so whether you use ink or not, try and kind of get it, get it moving on your, your paper or your canvas. I like this uh, pattern that the ink made down here. So I think I'll probably uh, keep that and uh, let it dry as is. I'm also going to try and using the brush here. Like this. All right. Let's just make a little bit of bright color over here. Like 
this. I'm using quite a bit of water here, so um, it will uh, need a bit of time to dry. I think you, um, if you look closely, you can kind of see the pigment of the ink is uh, separating, kind of making this granular um, effect here. This is something uh, we see a lot uh, if you have tried uh, using watercolor. This is some effects that we often see with certain colors um, in watercolor. And I really like this effect, uh, this uh, granulating effect. I think it's beautiful and it adds a lot of texture and life to a painting. So uh, I guess the pigments that are in the ink, they act in a similar way. Okay, now it's uh, I'm going to have to let this uh, dry completely um, before I continue. I already put out my color. Uh, maybe that was uh, a bit uh, quick. So uh, what I'll do is I will mist the paint with my spray bottle. Just, oops, not really spraying well. There we go. And then I'm going to cover it up with a plastic tub like this. Time for this to dry out completely. The painting has dried and uh, I want to add some uh, crimson now. So I'm just gonna wet my brush and take a little bit of this crimson. I don't, I don't actually need a lot. It's a very, uh, it's a very powerful color. It's uh, very intense. So, I'm uh, going to uh, maybe add a little bit more water, actually. It's going to be almost like a, a watercolor layer here. So let's try and add it in here. And then if I want to, I can soften some of these uh, transitions using a paper towel. So I'm going to partly cover some of the, the yellow. And again, just break up those hard edges. You can even uh, absorb some of the excess uh, paint using the paper towel if you like. So try and uh, go over some of the previous layers. See how it creates different uh, colors there. And um, it all helps to create uh, depth uh, and interest uh, when we see these, uh, this layering. Uh, Kinochrodone uh, Crimson is a very transparent color. So any time you put it on top of another color, you can see the underlying color through it. And it kind of, um, those two colors combined give this uh, very nice uh, peachy uh, color. And let me add a little bit more uh, down here just to tie the painting together like this. Okay, and uh, I also want this layer to dry. So I'm just gonna cover my paint again. And let's uh, try some mark making with a pencil. And notice I'm not holding the pencil like this. I'm actually holding it at the end that way. It will give a, a looser mark as I use it. And I won't be able to control it just as, um, as well as if I have it down here. My um, marks will be looser and a lot more expressive. So uh, if you want to loosen up, definitely try this, uh, this tip to hold both your brush and your pencil um, up here at the end. So um, I'm kind of rolling the pencil 
uh, from side to side as I'm making the marks also. That's another way to kind of make some expressive loose uh, marks. I can't control it completely and that's the whole point. Um, and uh, let's see. Maybe some marks for some foreground grasses or something here. Um, also, of course, the quicker you do your marks, uh, the less you'll be able to control it. And uh, let's see, because this is just a regular pencil, I will be able to um, erase some of the marks that I don't want to keep. I'm going to let the painting dry again, uh, dry it up completely before uh, adding the next layer. You can see that my paper does uh, buckle a little bit. Um, if you want to avoid this, uh, you do need to use a thicker paper, very thick watercolor paper, or you could coat your paper uh, with uh, a couple of layers of gesso before uh, starting. Uh, using gesso will also help prevent the tape, uh, the masking tape from um, ruining the paper as you pull it off if you're not careful. So. Um, I haven't used gesso on this piece um, and it does buckle a little bit. I, I don't think it's a real problem uh, at this stage. And once the painting is completely dry, I can lay it flat and weigh it down and it will. Uh, I'll get rid of the, the slight buckling that is there. But you can definitely prevent this uh, if you use uh, a couple of layers of gesso before uh, you actually start painting. The Previous paint layers here are dry and uh, I think I'd like to start introducing uh, a bit of uh, some cooler colors, maybe some cool gray and bluish gray uh, color or color tones. So um, let's do that and uh, see how it develops. I'm using a slightly smaller brush at this point. It says size six, it says, but doesn't really matter with the size, I think. But uh, something that's a little bit more easier to control than this large one I've been using so far. I'm going to take some of this bluish gray that I have here. I'm just going to add a little bit of black to it. I want to darken it a bit and take the intensity down and make kind of a bluish gray, give it a bit more here, and perhaps a little bit of white. Um, you can see my paint is still very thin. Um, it's very close to um, watercolor consistency if you've been painting with watercolor. So let's um, try and uh, add a bit of this. Now, of course, the paper is completely dry, so I'll be able to control the flow of the paint a lot easier. Um, I kind of see this as the sky, and this is the foreground here, and the middle ground, so uh, I'll add a little bit of some cooler colors here in the middle ground, and that should make my horizon line recede into space. Although this is an... an um, expressive um, landscape, I still want to add some uh, realistic uh, details or uh, to the painting. So let's see. It's actually quite dark there. Let me add a little bit more water and a bit more white.
when using uh, acrylics very thinly like this, it's uh, really easy to build up continuous layers. All you have to remember is uh, that it's a good idea to let the layers dry thoroughly before adding the next, or you'll end up mixing all your colors and um, they'll all end up like uh, mud or they definitely can. So let's add a little bit of dark gray up here as well to create some depth. Ooh, this is a lovely uh, combination here when you can see this, uh, these colors underneath or you can see it through this gray color that I mixed. I really like that. I think that looks beautiful. I think I'm gonna repeat it a bit over here. And of course, let's scratch into the, the paint a bit. I kind of feel this is the sun peeking through there. Maybe I should get rid of it. I can't really decide if I should paint it over or not. In a way, I sort of like it. Um, so I think I'll keep it. I do want to soften this paint over here. I'm just cleaning my brush now with a bit of pure water. See if I can kind of lift this paint over here. Okay, there we go. Um, and back to the gray here. And I'm adding again water. And I'm gonna try and take some of this color into the foreground also to, uh, sorry, to kind of tie the whole painting together. It really helps when you repeat the same color in different parts of the painting. Let's see here. A lot of times I also like to stop my brush strokes before they reach the edge. Not all brush strokes or uh, pencil marks have to go over the edge. It looks nice sometimes when they do, but also it's nice sometimes when they stop before that. So think about that as you are painting along. Over here, for example, we see how they continue. So we get a lot, um, a lot of a much sharper um, transition here and it sort of leads the eye over here uh, towards the edge. And you really don't want too much of this. You don't want too much going on around here uh, on the edges because you want the viewer to, to look around in the painting, not uh, make their eye go off the painting. So, of course, try and vary this um, a little bit and think of it as uh, just another tool in your toolbox to be able to uh, control where the viewer is going to look and to be able to um, convey what you want to say with your painting to direct the viewer's attention towards what you think they should be looking at. Um, right now, I think this is very, very powerful. And this is uh, very dark compared to everything uh, else in the painting. So this is definitely where my eye goes uh, to these areas down here. So what I'll do now is I'll take a black and white photo and uh, see what I want to do with the, this composition before moving on. So, mist the paint over here and cover it up. And um, of course, let this dry as well. Then uh, take a black and white photo to reassess uh, where I go from here. Looking at the black and white photo, it's easy to see where the value contrast is greatest. And that is, of course, with these two uh, dark areas that uh, are here in front and also in this area over here um, on the left hand side. So um, what I have to decide now is, is that where I want the focus to go? And if not, what can I do about that? 
I like these shapes. I do wish they were in a slightly different place on the paper. I am a little bit um, sad that they are right in the middle here. So uh, I think I would like to tone them down a bit and then uh, maybe make some shapes similar to this uh, in this area over here and make this uh, area over here my, my focal point. Um, this morning, looking at the sunrise, there were some uh, trees in the distance, kind of some uh, silhouettes of trees. So uh, that will be my inspiration. I'm not actually, I'm not looking at a reference photo or anything now. I'm doing it purely uh, from memory and from just trying to evoke the feeling I got when I was looking at the sunrise. I'm not trying to copy it. I'm trying to evoke the feeling I got when I looked at the sunrise, if that makes any sense. So um, I'm going to tone down this uh, area here um, using some some yellow. So let's see if I can make a, a yellow curler that will cover up this area. So I'm using a uh, dry brush with some of this paint on it here. So let's see. That might be a bit too bright. Let me just get a bit more ink here. I could use another color, a yellow color, for example, but the point is I want to use the colors, this limited palette that I used from the beginning. So, and I might not want to cover it over completely. Maybe I'll keep a little bit of this like that. Okay, yeah, that's definitely better. And maybe I'll just tone down this a little bit over here as well. Okay, good. Let's take a quick look at the painting now in black and white and see how the composition shifted now that uh, this uh, area in front uh, was changed. The foreground area definitely got a lot calmer to look at, uh, which is great because uh, now I can uh, decide where I want my uh, my focal point to be. I could use, uh, of course, my, my ink pure uh, as is. Um, it's definitely a possibility to use the dropper and draw in a shape over here, but I want to be able to control it a little bit better. So I'll take some pure ink here and maybe mix in a little bit of black just to make sure that it's quite dark and uh, I think I'd lay it in over here um, on purpose I'm not gonna use uh, I'm not gonna draw it in with a pencil first because again I want it to be loose and expressive so um, you might want to use a larger a smaller brush as well but I do um, dare you to try and use a larger brush than you normally would. Uh, it will make your marks different and bolder and that's what we're going for in this piece. So let's see some marks like this. Maybe I'll turn the brush also from side to side just to get a few different marks like this. And uh, maybe I'll make some of them a little bit taller just to vary the marks a little bit like that. Okay. But um, let's take a look, another look in black and white and see how the composition shifted and how our focal point is over here now. What I would like for you to... Um, consider when you're doing this type of uh, painting um, is uh, if you start out loose then you can gradually move into uh, more detail and things like that. If you uh, noticed I didn't start the painting by drawing out uh, anything with a pencil or anything like that. Um, that was uh, on purpose because I wanted to stay as loose uh, and expressive as possible. So if you like this uh, expressive, loose um, quality in your work, uh, try to be as bold and loose 
as possible right from the beginning. It's very, very difficult to uh, go in and, and be bold at this point, for example. If I wanted this, uh, let's say I had uh, made the foreground and I wanted to make a, a bold uh, sky, it would be uh, very difficult for me to make bold uh, marks. I would worry about uh, maybe painting into the area down here. So um, try and get your bold marks in from uh, the beginning and then adjust as you move along in the painting. That would definitely be um, one of my uh, best uh, forms of advice. Okay, um, I found a few uh, crayons and pencils here. These are water soluble uh, crayons and pencils. Uh, just use whatever you have on hand. I, I found uh, just a mix of uh, different ones that have similar colors to the ones that are already in the, the painting here. This is kind of a, a greenish uh, color. I don't know if I'm gonna use that, but um, these uh, kind of pink colors here, I'll just put a few more marks in the sky, I think, and see how that, how that looks. Again, I'm rolling the pencil as I'm moving it on the paper to create these uh, loose marks. Let's see if this one sticks better. Almost the same color. And just do a few more marks there. Okay, I wanna make sure that I also stop before I get completely carried away in mark making. Maybe I should just darken a little bit out here on the horizon with a, a bit of a dark blue. Let me, uh, let me do that. If you want to continue learning more about uh, painting looser and more expressive, be sure to download my free guide. Uh, there is a link below this video. And the free guide, it gives you five proven ways to loosen up your painting style. And uh, it's uh, loaded with uh, tips and uh, my very best advice and definitely something I use every day myself as I'm uh, painting. Um, so very useful hands-on uh, advice that you can go ahead and use right away. So um, if you are interested in uh, improving your uh, loose landscape painting, be sure to uh, download your copy of the free guide. Okay, I'm mixing up a uh, kind of dark gray color here. And uh, maybe I'll just add a little bit more uh, water to get it flowing better. And I'm gonna try and see how it looks when I do a little bit out here. I don't want it to be too um, sharp. So maybe I'll go in and loosen it up a little bit on the with a little bit of water. I don't want it competing too much with this thing over here. And I think that might be what's happening now. So I'm just gonna take a clean brush with water here and soften out these marks here. Yeah, that's the good thing about uh, if you're fast uh, with acrylics, you can, uh, when you paint something you don't like, you can, um, if you're quick, put some uh, wet water, some water with a clean brush on it and then kind of wipe it off uh, if you paint uh, thin layers like this. Actually, I think I want something a little bit more blue and a little bit lighter than this. So I'll take this bluish gray and add some white to just lighten it up. And let's see if I put a bit out here. Yes, that's definitely better. And I think I'll put some on the horizon over here as well and maybe cover up this dark gray over here. Yeah, I like how that looks. Um, and I wanna just take a little bit of this blue color and add it over here. All right.
a little bit more white and lighten this area here. I'm doing this to just make the transition a little bit more gradual. Okay, yeah, I, I like this. Um, maybe I'll add a little bit of blue over here. And now I want to stop because I'm starting to get a bit uh, fidgety uh, or fussy about the details. So stop, stop, stop and assess. I think I have uh, the color scheme I was going for, definitely. The feeling of the sunrise, um, a dramatic sky with clouds, and uh, some uh, interesting marks as well as some uh, interesting silhouettes in the in the horizon, on the horizon. It's time to peel off the masking tape and uh, see what we got. I um, want to be careful here not to rip the paper. So now there's just one thing left to do. And that is, of course, uh, sign uh, my name. I hope this tutorial was useful to you. I hope it gave you some ideas on how to loosen up and uh, get a bit more brave and bold in your work. Um, and uh, I want to thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next video. Thank you very much.